Hello, Ensemble. I uh, hope you had a great rehearsal this Saturday. I apologize for not being able to be there. I had such a great time on Friday, and it was so wonderful to see um, the work that is uh, moving forward. And um, uh, I'm just excited to keep it going with it. Uh, I apologize for also this video quality. This isn't um, the computer I normally work with, but we're going to make it work somehow. <laughs> so. Um, this week's video blog uh, is going to engage with some of the conversations we have been having and will continue to have in this process. Um, and that is where we sit as performers, divisors, an ensemble working on a work that feels a little removed from us. And how do we continue to engage with that distance? Um, how do we get closer to it? Or do we always acknowledge that there will be this gulf? And then how does that work its way into the work itself? How does that somehow find its way into our play and into the world of our play? Um, the team and I uh, have been, we've all been kind of having this conversation and I know that that has been happening amongst uh, all of us uh, in the ensemble as well. And I'm hoping that this week and this upcoming few weeks we'll actually be able to engage this conversation in a really unique way. One, um, hopefully the interviews themselves will help lead us in a different direction for this because, um, it, you know, talking to someone who has firsthand experience, uh, working with people searching for refuge could help us start thinking of our roles in this world um, of the play, but also in the world in general in a very different way. And also how we can also maybe personally engage in the process of refuge and providing refuge for people. So the interviews are going to be part of a separate conversation, but very much tied into the, the um, messaging that we're having at this moment, the, the, the problems that we are fighting for in this moment. The hope is with the interviews, we're going to uh, get some material that um, we'll record. So maybe these, hopefully these interviews will be recorded. There'll be a longer email prompt about this. Um, and that maybe some of these stories and stuff can help fuel how close we get to the material and, and what we can add in terms of the richness that already exists on the page and is um, emerging in the room itself. The first video, the first prompt for this, I'm going to give full credit to Mauricio, Mauricio for. Uh, we have all, as a creative team, like I said, been talking about this. Um, and uh, we were thinking, how do we engage this? And Mauricio came up with this idea that I was going to just adapt and try to make it my own. But actually, what he wrote was so interesting. I'm just going to read you exactly the email that he sent concerning this prompt. And then there will be a second part to this prompt. So it's a two-part process. The first part, let me just read you the email real quick. Who is the born-into-it judge degenerate that you are hoping to get closer to? Find images that portray this person. So that's the first thing we do. Who is the person in the play? Uh, for me, it is Kurban. So I'm looking for images that capture what I imagine Kurban and his circumstances to have been. Then, second part of this first prompt, find images for what you think that badass young person would think about us. This is an opportunity for us to recognize our distance. So for me, Mauricio, what do I imagine Kurban thinks of me? Well, in South Africa, I had young folks telling me what they thought my posh life was in the United States. So I would find images that represent what I imagine these folks think of me. In particular, I'm looking for images of people, of clothing, things that uh, we as a team and Anlin could then bring in to help build costume pieces. Pretty fascinating. I'm going to add a little piece to that. Um, I think the characters are really important. Um, my ideal in this particular situation is that you are going to find three people. Um, so three people in the, the, the story and maybe uh, or ideas, three people, ideas that we can engage with in the same way. And I'm going to give you another example. Uh, for instance, the Taliban. I think I know what I have an idea of what the Taliban looks like. So what I would do is search for images of what the Taliban looks like online that I think represents uh, not just, you know, one look or one style or one moment, but a few things that I could share that would look 
like how I envision the Taliban then, I would turn it around and think about how the Taliban thinks of me as an American. Um, so this is a way in which we, like he said, engage the distance in the story. So that's the first prompt. It's not just about finding a character and how they think of us and how we think of them, but also maybe like a group of people. Uh, how do a smuggler think of us and how do we think a smuggler looks like and how they walk, go through the world? The second part of this prompt, though, is tied to the first in that those three things that are in the script um, that you find that you have a little bit of distance from, um, and that you want to engage the uh, distance through the visual means, this next part is going to be through just a verbal feelings. Um, so this next part will say, I will begin with, this next prompt will begin with the idea of, I know this about Kurban, the Taliban, whatever we decide to put in there. I know this. This could be what we know from the script itself. So. I know that Kurban's a young man really interested in studying, that he's from this part of the world, that he's, this is what I know in this story of this world, the, the, the construction of the world. I know that the Taliban is responsible for some of the, uh, for, for part of this refugee crisis and, and is a threat, right, to the people who are living in this area. These are things I know from this story and from what I've read in the world. Then the second part of this prompt is, it reminds me of blank. What does it remind you of? This, I would recommend, the way we do this, is that you just kind of take a moment to just throw some ideas down on paper. What does it remind you of? Well, Kurban, for me, reminds me of, well, honestly, like any kid I've met. It reminds me of a teenager who is just trying to make their way in the world. He sort of reminds me of me in some ways, of just his fascination with books and learning new things. He also, though, reminds me of uh, some images that we've already talked about mine, of people who are um, searching for refuge. He reminds me of this movie I've seen about a, of a boy escaping from, from a, a camp. It's not exactly the same thing, but it reminds me of this. Or the Taliban. The Taliban reminds me of 9-11. Uh, now, I know they're not responsible for 9-11, but I think of, you know, some of the fundamentalist um, uh, extremist uh, organizations, uh, um, Muslim organizations that we feel have been creating some of these uh, huge refugee crises that are continuing to occur in um, parts of the world. I, I kind of, now there's some threads between them and Al-Qaeda and and uh, and all of these other, there's like some threads and that's what I, uh, it reminds me of. I may be wrong, there may be no connection, but it reminds me of those things. It's okay for us to put these out there because the idea of how we feel about something is really important. Um, and so that is about spanning that difference. So two parts, there's a visual part of this, and then there is the what we know and what it reminds us of, us of in the world. All right, I hope that, I know it's very long, I apologize, I know we're heading into like nine minutes with this video, um, but I would love to see what everyone can bring to the table with this, and I'm hoping that this helps us engage this conversation in a very different way. Thank you all, and I am excited to see you all soon.